hello also in last video we saw how can we transpose records from rows to columns using java transformation in iics and basically this was the mapping which we have used now in this video we are going to see how can we use static lookup transformation and based on the output of that uh, static lookup uh, transformations value how can we insert or update the records at target now before actually creating the mapping let's understand the data so our target would be this dimension employee so we'll be loading the records from OLTP or maybe transactional system that is nothing but this employees table okay so our goal is to load the records from 107 records from employees table to this dimension employee uh, table now as you can see the structure of our dimension table is slightly different it has a surrogate key which is nothing but the identity key uh, and remaining columns are coming from source now here other than employee id uh, remaining all columns are okay but for employee id we have defined that as a primary key it's a business key the intention is we are going to maintain the granularity of our employee dimension at employee id level so type one uh, type i mean it's scd type one uh, kind of so you will not have duplicate records for employee id so the intention is uh, whenever we are reading the records from employees table right we are going to do the lookup on employee id we are going to see the incoming employee id from transactional table if it exists in the dimension table or not all right if it exists uh, do not insert it the update the record if it doesn't exist then go ahead and insert the record okay so let's do the mapping now so what i will do let me close this guy i'll go to new mapping create and uh, i will use m underscore static lookup lkp let's say lkp insert update all right i will for now i will delete this target src employee select the connection select the object so it is employee stable and I will add expression as a best practice I will rename that to exp employee uh, we will uh, ignore the columns which are not required so as I see here we need only these columns so let me go back um, name fields configure so we don't need we need email id employee id first name we don't need hire date we need last name uh, we need salary and we also need phone number perfect so six columns one two three four five six perfect all right now as we discussed earlier we are supposed to do the lookup we have we have to see incoming employee id if it exists in the uh, dimension table or not and for that reason i will add lookup transformation so that lookup is based on employee dimension table okay let me add the source as well Perfect. so these are the incoming rows okay we'll not touch them as of now these are let's select the target um, target would be employee dimension now lookup condition so let me resolve this conflict this is expression prefix let's say and I will use source or maybe let's say LK, LKP because this is coming from lookup okay and let me add the condition 
lookup condition will be based on employee id and this is employee id so this is from dimension table that's the reason why we have surrogate key here and this is coming from our source okay now return field so um uh, employee id uh, what i will do i will exclude employee id and dimension uh, surrogate key okay remaining fields i will delete so only these two fields will get passed to the next transformation okay now we let me where is that okay now let me add expression again here okay and exp lkp now reason we need to add expression is there are too many fields right coming we don't need all that all, the, all those fields okay we just need these two fields employee uh, employee id and uh, dim emp key okay so what i will do is ideally we should rename this guy but that's fine now so let me field configure and i will just keep these two fields uh no let me pass this guy okay i will keep these two fields look up which is coming from source actually and this is the surrogate key this we don't need this is coming from look up i will tell you like why this key is needed so this is actually coming from source it's kind of a left join okay so no matter what whether we found the record in dimension table or not this value will always be there since it is coming from source okay and this is kind of a left join coming from uh dimension table lookup table okay now since there are only two values we can't go ahead and connect that to target because target would need five values at least which are coming from source so that's the reason why and those values are sitting over here in this expression okay so there are two branches one so ideally we supposed to connect this to this target okay but since that insert update logic is involved we sub we had to do the lookup on dimension table now that's the reason why i will involve joiner here also now one branch of joiner so this i will consider as a master branch that will come from source and this will come from detail oops perfect now what we are joining we are joining let's say source to lookup right dim emp let's say incoming fields incoming fields are fine we don't need to modify anything here okay now join condition so join condition will be based on employee id and this is from again source okay now as i said in this video we will be looking only for static lookup and by default it's a static lookup okay if i go back if we want to move that as a dynamic lookup uh, sorry uh, this is a static lookup so i think i did not explain this earlier so by default it's a static lookup okay if you have to convert that to dynamic lookup you have to select this property but for now uh, or sake of this video we'll just keep that as a uh, default which is static lookup so it is and uh, keeping the cache okay and there is a importance of there is some significance of this we'll come uh, we'll discuss that particular thing in later part uh later uh, videos in this video series all right for for now let's keep everything as default that is a static lookup and then now i will connect this to target okay, and let's uh, see let's select the target target type select and we supposed to insert the records in dimension table and by default the operation is insert so we'll see that for now it is fine there are no records in the target table so by default all the incoming records will get tagged as insert and those will get inserted okay i will not select this target target table property target fields are fine and last thing which is remaining is we have to map it okay 
ओके फर्स्ट नेम लास्ट नेम ईमेल फोन सैलरी ऑल राइट देर इज वन थिंग अपडेटेड ऑन विल कम टू दैट लेटर ऑन सो फॉर नाउ लेट सेव इट and let's validate it so mapping is in valid state but uh, there is one thing which is still pending okay now in earlier video we saw in when it comes to joiner right if the branches both the branches of joiner coming from same source then it would expect uh, to check that property called sorted input if there are two different sources and uh, they are going at separate branches for a joiner it is okay but now in this case both branches are coming from single source so that's the reason why we supposed to select that property let's go to advance and i will select sorted input but now since we have selected the sorted input that means we are telling the joiner transformation that incoming rows would be sorted but we have to make sure they are sorted so what we'll do let's add sorter here we'll sorter all right and i will sort those records is a sort employee id let's say based on employee id perfect see you and let's run it okay so if everything is fine it should insert 107 records into target okay 107 records got inserted so let's see here Oops, sorry. Hundred seven records got inserted. Perfect. Now what I will do is, now for this record number hundred seven, the salary is forty two hundred. Okay, I will update that to eight thousand. And now what I would expect is, as per my uh, let's say dimension load strategy, if something some value at source gets changed, the same value should get updated at target as well. Now if I try to run this guy again it will fail because by default we are marking all the rows as insert so if i go back so we are marking uh, all the rows as insert so in case you have to update it let's just change this to update so what it will do is it will uh, by default mark all incoming rows as update and it will update it so update based on what so update that value based on employee id because that is what we are considering as a primary key all right so i will save this guy there is one small change we'll do is uh how can we really know now in this case uh we have updated this value so if i run if i execute the job this particular record this 4200 should get changed to 8 8000 however it will try to update even up other records as well right remaining 106 records so we'll make sure this updated on value gets changed so for that what i will do is i will let me add the expression in between exp updated on and what's happening here I don't know why this is not going away but that's fine expression I don't let me close this guy and reopen still not going somehow this is still not going let me refresh
okay let me go back to my expression transformation all right and as i said i will add one extra port so o underscore let's say updated d8 updated on and i will treat that as a date time click ok configure i will go to maybe system variable and i will use a sys date validate okay and i will assign this value to target field mapping okay save and let's run it let me validate just in case it's all good let's run it so since we have marked all incoming records as update it will try to update all 107 records perfect let me go back okay one thing is salary got updated and updated on the value also got populated let me look that for other records as well so let's say not equal to yeah see that means all 107 records got updated so we just saw how can we insert and update the records but all these things should happen dynamically right we should not every time there is no way we can change it to insert and then it to up, then to update all these things should happen dynamically the insert and update now the remaining there are multiple ways we can by which we can achieve that and those things we'll see in the next video so thanks for watching this video and see you in the next video